Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, um, Senator Capito, and to, to all of our witnesses. Uh, I do think you're right. We are sort of arguing two things here. You're arguing the, the science and the effects. You're arguing the law and the Constitution. Um, for those of us that want to go back and forward seven generations, my sixth great grandfather gave his life at Bunker Hill for the cause of liberty. And I believe as if, if we're going to use broad definitions, that would be for the cause of federalism, not an insignificant issue that, that we, we should ignore for the science. Um, but I want to ask you, Ms. Bodine, because earlier this year in this committee, Lieutenant General Spellman, the head of the Corps of Engineers, testified, I, I, I gasped when he said it, he said it rather casually in the context of workforce. He said um, that the Corps of Engineers has about 80, considers about 80 federal um, issues a year, decisions, 80,000, 80,000 federal decisions per year. Um, do you believe that, um, if there's 80,000 regulatory actions by the Corps of Engineers that, that the clarification, the simplification of SACIT should reduce that workload for the Corps of Engineers and perhaps there's some efficiency that we could actually gain from this? Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see that because the way they set it up, it is going to be case-by-case -case determinations instead of right definitions. Thank you. And that's my concern. It's like how much simpler could they make it and you know, how much more prescriptive could they have been and I suppose you could say we could be more prescriptive if we change the Clean Water Act to the, you know, the Navigable Waters Act, um, but we don't call the Endangered Species Act the Every Species Act. Um, definition, you know, titles are one thing, definitions another thing. I want to I want to ask you about um, uh, about permitting reform. Senator Capital referenced uh, the importance of it. A lot of us on all sides uh, of the issue are concerned about and want some permitting reform. And one of the things that I've emphasized throughout this debate is, is it's become just as difficult to permit a wind farm or a solar farm, you know, panel farm or a, a transmission line as it is a, a, a fuels pipeline of some sort. And, and transmission lines and pipelines, and for that matter, interstate highways are long linear, right? Long linear, it's some, often, almost always, multi-state, multi-jurisdictional um, infrastructure. Um, and because of the, the complexity of this type of, of uh, infrastructure, Congress established the nationwide permit program to allow these projects to obtain one permit as long as they're determined to have a minimal effect on the environment. Can you discuss the importance of a nationwide permit and, and, and maybe also considering um, both the efficiency of it as well as the effectiveness, I guess, of, of a nationwide permit? Yeah, uh, the Corps of Engineers nationwide permits is really the reason why we haven't completely stopped building infrastructure in this country because it is a, a more uh, ef efficient and you know, truncated review based on minimal impacts. Um, there has been a gradual narrowing of the nationwide permits, uh, which means that more and more would be subject to the individual permits, which are what take years and years and years and subject of lawsuits. Uh, you know, the, you know, if, if there isn't federal jurisdiction, then you don't need to get the nationwide permit. Uh, but that question is going to be decided case by case, and it's, um, it remains to be seen how that will be applied. It's hard for me as a former regulator to imagine a uh, multi-state, multi-jurisdictional linear infrastructure that doesn't have a federal nexus oh. somewhere along the line, right? I mean, yep. so it seemed to me that... Uh, anyway, that said, I, I think it's another part of the discussion I think we ought to get back to. Let, let me ask, it, it, where do you see the legal fight coming? I mean, obviously, if two and a half pages of amendments to a 141-page... Um, rule in the context of a major uh, Supreme Court decision uh, isn't going to isn't going to be adequate. Certainly not adequate for the Prairie Pothole region that I come from. Um, and by the way, um, with all, all due respect, not federally protected does not mean not protected. Um, in fact, I would submit that the mediocrity of the federal government is far far worse for the protection of wetlands in North Dakota than uh, than what North Dakotans, and for that matter, what farmers. Do how they protect their own wetlands. But where do you see the legal fight coming in, in, uh, you know, in the next several months? Well, I think, um, and again, I'm not representing anybody I in understand. this. I uh, understand. But uh, what I have read and heard is that, yes, there are groups that are going to challenge the, um, the September conforming rule based on both the issue of com no, no notice and comment as well as the substance. And then the litigation over the January rule uh, is ongoing. Um, there, right. you know, I said that's why it's not in effect. That's why it stayed. 
in 26 states, and that litigation will go on. So yes, there'll be, still be litigation. Well, let, let's face it. I mean, in in as long as there's chaos and, and uncertainty, you know, there's going to be litigation and stays, and maybe that's a strategy in and of itself. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank. Uh,